So this is starting chapter 20, which is focusing on electrochem. Uh, and electrochem is, uh, in general, is getting electricity from a chemical reaction. Okay, so electricity from a chemical reaction. So we have uh, kind of introduced the idea of losing or gaining electrons from first semester. So uh, this first page is going to be a little bit of review of kind of what I introduced to you before. So electrochem is focused on electricity, transfer electrons. Uh, so that's why we're going to talk about that. So oxidation versus reduction. Um, oxidation and reduction, we usually call it a redox reaction uh, because you need one with the other. So somebody is going to lose electrons, that is oxidation, and remember it is Leo. And reduction is gain of electrons, that is GER. So Leo, the lion goes GER. Uh, was a way to remember oxidation is loss, reduction is gain, or you could remember oil rig. Um, oxidation is loss, reduction is gain. So how we use this is, if I take a chemical reaction, so magnesium reacting with lead to nitrate produces magnesium nitrate and lead. Okay. So we call this more of a traditional uh, single replacement reaction as a way to kind of understand it. Um, but really, we are changing oxidation state, okay, uh, which equals essentially the charge that you have. Uh, so um, remember that elements have an oxidation state of zero because they exist. Um, at that state, so we don't need to worry about um, their oxidation state. So um, element, magnesium is an element, lead is an element. So anytime you see a single replacement, chances are the elements that are listed by itself are the ones that are changing oxidation state. So um, nitrate overall has a negative one charge, so the lead must be the plus two, and again, magnesium is plus two as well. So what we could write is something called half reactions uh, to show exactly who is gaining, who is losing electrons. So if I look at magnesium, it's becoming magnesium plus two. And then lead is going from plus two to zero. Okay. So if magnesium is going from a zero to a plus two, that means it is losing two electrons. So we write the electrons on the product side if we are losing them. And lead is going, lead two ion is going to zero, so that must mean it is gaining two electrons. So if we are gaining, we write the electrons on the reactant side, the reactant side. So that means magnesium is undergoing oxidation and the lead two is undergoing reduction. The way I always remember is reduction, I'm adding electrons, that's negative, so I'm reducing, uh, is kind of how I remember those things. But again, remember losing and gaining electrons is how you do it. Now with these half reactions, another way you can uh, define things is by what they call agents. And these are the reactants in the chemical reactant, uh, rea <laughs> chemical reaction. Um, so these are just some vocabulary terms. The AP test doesn't expect you to know them. I'm just kind of introducing them so that if you see them going forward, it's not um, foreign to you. Um, I'm not really gonna test you on it. But the confusing part of agents happens to be the reducing agent is always gonna be the one that is oxidized. And the oxidizing agent is always going to be the thing that is reduced. So it is what I call the opposite agent. Uh, so magnesium versus the lead, magnesium is undergoing oxidation. So what it's doing is it's called a reducing agent because it's causing a reduction to happen because it's losing these electrons and somebody else is going to gain them. While the lead 2 ion is called the oxidizing agent because it is accepting those two electrons, 
to uh, uh, become a, a reduction reaction. So um, again, I just introduced it so that if you do see it in the future, it is not um, confusing to you. Okay. So of course, with this, we have balancing. And we did this before. Um, so I'm going to go over another example with you uh, so that you feel comfortable. Uh, but you will be asked to balance redox reactions again. Um, so we always balance everything except hydrogen and oxygen. If I need oxygen, I add water. If I need hydrogen, I add an H plus. I need to make sure the electrons are balanced. So going back to this example, I have two electrons in both cases, um, balanced charge. And then if I'm basic, again, this is all acidic conditions. If it is basic, then I add as many H pluses, excuse me, I add OH minus as however many H pluses on both sides. So again, for these reactions, um, you are going to be told whether it's in an acid or a base, so that doesn't need to be something you worry about. Um, the critical part is for you to write the two half reactions, okay? So I have dichromate, Cr2O7 2 minus is becoming Cr3 plus, and Cl minus is becoming Cl2, okay? Um, it does not matter the order you do things, but um, realize that I need two chromium, so I need to put a two in front of the chromium here. I have two chlorines here, so I need to put a two there before I get started. I have seven oxygens here, so I need to add seven waters over to this side. Um, since I added essentially 14 H pluses, I got to put 14 H pluses over here. Um, the CLs are fine. Um, and again, it doesn't matter the order you do things. Uh, so for this uh, chromium, uh, if I go up here, I'm going to do this for you. So this is uh, dichromate, and I need to know what the oxidation state of chromium is. Well, oxygen, of course, is always a negative two. That is, uh, unless it's a peroxide or a superoxide. So that means I have seven of them, so they're going to be a negative 14, and they have to end up being a negative two because that's the charge of the dichromate. So therefore, the chromium must be adding a plus 12, but because there are two of them, each one of them is a plus six. So if I go back here, this is a plus six, and it does get confusing with all of the charges and things, um, so just be careful about that. So I'm going from a plus six to a plus three. So that means I am gaining three electrons but how many chromiums do I have? I have two chromiums, so that means I must put six electrons over here on the left on the reactant side in order for that to be balanced. Um, everything else in that reaction looks okay. So since I'm adding electrons here, I have to be losing them over here. Um, I have two, this is a minus one, and this is going to a zero. So that must mean I am um, losing two electrons. Uh, because each one of the electrons from the chlorine to this, uh, so it's two electrons, and it doesn't matter if I write the two electrons on the right or the left of the formula, it's just as, uh, make sure that it's right of the arrows, again, because of um, space. Uh, so I have six electrons here. I need to lose six electrons here, so I have to multiply everything by three. So this is going to be six, that's six, and that becomes three. And then I add everything together. So I have 14 H plus plus dichromate plus I have 6 Cl minus goes to 2 Cr3 plus plus 7 waters plus 3 Cl2. Okay. Uh, so then I check the charges. So I got 14 positive and negative 2, so that's a plus 12. And then I got a negative 6, so that's a plus 6 on this side. Um, this has no charge, this has no charge, so the only charge is coming from the 2 times the 3, so that's a plus 6. So that is correct uh, in terms of the balancing. Um, so what if this happened to be in a basic solution? Again, it would be telling you that up here. So just a quick reminder, um, I would have to add 14 OH minuses to both sides uh, in order for it to be legitimate. Um, so it would make this um, 
14 waters, so you would cancel out the seven waters here, and then you would leave the OH on one side or the other. So again, um, just a quick review of how to do the balancing that we talked about in first semester. 